IEEE's bold path to audience data capture and monetization. We have David Fortino of NetLine and Mark David from IEEE, who will unpack IEEE's path to reimagining audience data capture and monetization methods. You'll learn innovative approaches to monetizing audience data, creating personalized experiences, optimizing products, and unlocking new revenue streams. Please welcome David and Mark. Yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, this conversation is going to be relatively casual, hopefully informal, a uh, bit, I think, humorous as well. So, uh, quick question to Mark though. Do you recall when we first met? I, I do recall because how could I forget a round of axe throwing in the middle of uh, Philadelphia? Very good. Yeah, I was hoping you didn't remember because I was going to say, like, well, at least it didn't take an axe for us to talk today. So. Uh, but anyway, oh, I do need the clicker so I can advance. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, as uh, the intro had nicely spoke to, we're going to be covering a lot of ground. Uh, we've got 14 minutes and 22 seconds to do so. So we'll dive in. Uh, Mark, do you want to just expand upon your intro real quick? Sure. So um, I'm the Director of Advertising and Business Development at IEEE. That's the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. We're not IE or IEEE, -E -E, we're IEEE. Um, we're a, a, a big professional association, one of the largest in the world. We have 420,000 global members. Um, we write standards, our volunteer members write standards for electricity and electronics. The Wi-Fi standard that you're all using right now is ours. This is the power generation and transmission that's powering this whole session. Um, we do about 2,000 conferences a year and we publish about 40% of the scientific research on electronics uh, that's published annually, and are the most cited uh, for patents of any publisher. So what I do within that, I'm the one per in, in the midst of all that, I'm the one person who's focused on B2B publishing. So I, I'm from your world. I, uh, I, I worked at Advanstar and Penton and Penwell. Um, IEEE is the one place that hasn't been acquired by Informa that I, that I <laughs> have worked at. Um, but uh, I, I tell people I'm the one person at IEEE who's, who's focused on advertising. So that's what I do, which in the context is also a channel for industry to, to reach our engineering audience. Perfect, thanks. Yeah, so Dave Fortino, Chief Strategy Officer over here at NetLine. Uh, NetLine, as of December 2021, was acquired by Informa, so we are a sister, brother company to Industry Um we focus on helping B2B marketers, media organizations, and agencies and also associations both better capture first party data, better monetize first party data, and become more operationally efficient. So getting to those points, uh, I think it's really helpful for Mark to kind of unpack his journey with tackling some of those challenges, right? So capturing data in and of itself is a whole other session. Industry Diet quickly spoke on some of that this morning. And there's some gaps into uh, how easily that's done, and there's always that balance of capturing a small amount of data that you can't otherwise really act and or intelligently model off of versus rich data sets. There's also the ability to quickly create campaigns that allow you to action data sets and attract audiences and how you do that organizationally and so on. And so uh, I think it would be helpful for everyone to kind of set the stage here as to kind of where you were coming from at the time I met you with the axe okay. in my hand, and then uh, we'll go from there. Well, I can't talk about the journey without talking about GDPR. I don't know if for many of you it was as much of a, a apple cart upsetter as it was for IEEE, but we had literally millions of names in disparate databases. Our conferences are very decentralized, and our data was decentralized and is, but with GDPR, there became a mandate that everything had to be centralized and everything had to be run through these approval filters to make sure we had approval. So we lost, I mean, you know, 95% of our millions of names. We have our, our 420,000 members and we have, you know, now been working to build our lists back up internally. So membership lists and marketing lists. 
Um, what I do specifically, again, being the advertising person, is I, I also do third-party lead, lead generation programs. But those were also dependent on, you want to generate leads against a white paper or a webinar, you need a list to do email marketing to, right? That's your best lead generator. So those got wiped out. Our communication society literally had a million names in its database. After the, the big flush out, <laughs> GDPR, we were down to 50,000 names. So that's, when I met you, we were starting there. Um, there's more to my story that I could get into in terms of the background, but um, I wanted to mention the GDPR part. So we're working to build names back up, fully compliant, having accepted the IEEE privacy policy. Um, and so NetLine is one of the, the ways that we're, we're helping to, to build that back up. Great. Yeah, and this, uh, to me, when we were debriefing kind of a bit of your organizational infrastructure, or perhaps lack thereof infrastructure, uh, was really indicative, right? I was trying to visually come up with something that was reflective of what you shared with yeah, us. Yeah, well, okay, so let me go into a couple other issues here. Um, so I, I've, I've said, um, IEEE, it's a very stable place. We've been around 150 years. Generally, the people do not get laid off there, et cetera. But being one person from B2B Media, of course, my little department had to be the exception. We did an acquisition, which didn't work out, and we sold it, and my team came and went, and the second team came and went. Um, and so right now, I have my, my support people and my ad sales are all under contract outside of IEEE. Um, and so the challenge of these transitions of the, trying to build our, 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 our database back up, but also the lead generation programs themselves, uh, as many of you know, this is the key growth area in B2B publishing. Everybody wants to generate leads. Um, and so the, the new team, the third new team that I had in five years was really struggling. That's the reason for this slide, was really struggling with how to organize lead gen programs. We're using on 24 for webinars and sort of jury rigging that data entry to cover all of our lead gen stuff. The rest of it is, you know, in Google Docs and spreadsheets and trying to manually keep track of who's been delivered their leads and who hasn't. And this is probably a mild uh, graphic. Um, and I'm not hands on with these things, right? Like I'm, I'm responsible for it, but I'm not the person setting up the lead gen programs. But what I am responsible for is starting to hear from my reps and my client base who are, are quite upset, as you know, if they've spent money for lead gen and then there's any disorganization in the program. They want their leads, you know, yesterday or, the, or this week. They, want, they don't even want a month, you know, monthly batch. Or they, they want, ideally, they could come in to the console and download their leads anytime they want. That's the idealized state we're trying to get to, but at least come on once a week, send me the, send me the leads, right? So, so that's where we've made this transition to the very zen-like <laughs> current state of affairs, which honestly, from my point of view means, you know, my hair is not on fire, the phone is not ringing, everybody's happy, but again, where I met Netline was the opportunity to, we're gonna talk about other features and benefits, but for me, it was the software be behind the program, which allows the, the user to organize and manage these programs, right? I don't know how, you know, how your success is with lead gen, but we might have 30 active lead gen programs at any one time, right? So it's a lot to manually keep track of. And, um, and I actually asked my, my contracted team of fulfillment people to look at the tool and listen to the story, and it was up to them. You know, we, we talk about the, the revenue and so forth that comes in from this, but that was my main reason for, for moving, was the ability to just organize these and protect the revenue stream and, and have it continue to, to grow. So. Yeah, well said. Um, yeah, what you're seeing here really speaks to that. So typically a media team, whether inside a traditional publisher or operating as a media team inside of an association, is taking a ton of manual tasks and really consolidating them into something that A, one person would manage, B, takes a few minutes, all of the data is instantly available online um, at any time you'd like. And more importantly, that data flows downstream into your customers and even internal constituents' tools in the frequency and format of their choice. So if the data needs to go to Marketo, Salesforce, or, data, uh, or maybe Google Data Studio, wherever, those aren't issues. Uh, and that gets back to you know, going from headaches to zen. Um, the beauty of the, the whole operating model 
is really predicated on the front side though. And so how many people here have bought something online by using Shopify? Sometimes you might not know it either because they don't do a great job of branding these experiences, but there are probably half of you. And so part of the NetLine platform is that we've developed a Shopify for B2B gated content. And what that means is if you're familiar with that Shopify experience, you put in your email address or your phone number, uh, you do not need to provide your credit card information again, your mailing address, all of that stuff. And so being that B2B gated content is never paid content or almost never, it's always free, white papers, eBooks, webinars, analyst reports, and so on. Um, we've layered a predictive layer on top of the reg path for countless media properties from Wall Street Journal, Harvard Business Review, all of Informa, Questex, Industry Dive, IEEE, and so on. Um, these stats are specific to IEEE. So 40% of users engaging with gated content experiences across all of their various audience touch points have zero typing. That's that Shopify idea. We then go further and actually leverage predict predictive capabilities. And what I mean by that is that the user is simply offered less typing. So if they provide their email address, and, and if your goal is simply to capture an email address, then you wouldn't ask for anything else. But ideally your goal is to know things about your audience and know things about how you can target these audiences. So, Predictive allows you to kind of do that while also asking very little questions. So by, uh, let's say a user typed in data at oracle.com, we don't need to ask the company name, the industry, the sub-industry, the company size, by revenues and or employee count, uh, their geographic location, and so on. All of those fields aren't even shown to the user. So form abandonment obviously goes down. Form conversion obviously increases. Uh, in net aggregate, 91% of IEEE's audiences that are engaging with gated content are either receiving a zero-typed experience or an enriched predictive experience, which basically forced them to fill out four to five fields. That's it. On the back end, IEEE always is receiving about 18 distinct values for every single user. So when you think about first-party data, capturing it is only part of the journey. Right? It's how you use that data, and you can only use it as well as you can target on it, which gets back to some of the stuff Industry Dive spoke about this morning, which is how do you keep audiences engaged? Well, if you're not doing a great job at targeting, you won't have engaged audiences, and so all of this kind of feeds those downstream systems. Um, the beauty of the platform is really twofold, right? It's not threefold, I suppose. It's that it's a no-cost tech stack, so the reason for that is this stat specifically is as users are engaging with the gated content, NetLine's able to inject additional content recommendations that are relevant to that particular user. And when I say that particular user, I mean that like exact user, their job function, their job level, their industry, the company, the geographic location, and so on. As that's happening, on a sub-millisecond basis, we're recommending a few bits of incremental content. It's kind of like Amazon's uh, checkout logic. You know, you've got something in your cart, you've got a TV in your cart, they say, people like you probably buy this uh, surround sound system. Same idea. The beauty here though is as users check those boxes, we are translating those into leads for other vendors. We generate revenue off of that. He generates revenue off of that. 25% of IEEE's registrations that are going through gated content experiences immediately monetize incrementally. So even if he was using a predictive form, for data capture on their sites. I'm not aware of anyone who's doing something similar to us, but without the revenue model, you're still just getting data capture to be used hopefully downstream. And so the underlying idea there is that, yeah, you're refining and kind of re-architecting your digital infrastructure as it relates to lead gen campaigns. You're making it super simple for users to engage with gated content experiences. You're extracting phenomenally deep data sets that you can then action downstream, and you're getting paid to do it. Um, so I'll leave you here, and I don't know if you have any parting comments here. I think, yeah, the revenue side isn't designed Yeah, I mean, I'll just add, add to that to say, as I said in my opening, you know, we, we would have paid for this software because <laughs> that was what I really wanted, but that, that's not the business model, and I'm not going to complain about getting it for free, but because of who we are and our, you know, our, our image as this sort of United Nations of technology, I'd be very careful about what these third-party recommendations were and how they're positioned, but um, I'm fine with it, or I wouldn't be sitting here. Um, it's, it, and it's, so it's a nice incremental revenue flow. It also um, 
has not created any issues. I haven't had anybody say, hey, I triply, why are you recommending? I mean, it's well-matched content. That's yeah, part of the secret. Yeah, it's so, part of the yeah. secret. Um, and also, I think people are used to it. It's also the way it's done. You've, you've opted into the piece of content that you are directed to already. It's not like this blocks your way. It's a, using the Amazon analogy, it's like this is in your cart already and then there's some other choices that you might you might be interested in. So exactly, um, you know, I'm not really aware of what the stats are. That's nice to see because um, I'm, I'm sure they're in my dashboard if I <laughs> go and look at it. But I, I am aware of the checks that come in, so that's that's a nice uh, <laughs> that works. incremental revenue. Paid for some lunches, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so that's going to wrap up our session. We have ten seconds. Um, yeah, at the core, if anybody would like to talk to us and learn a little bit more about the platform. Talk to Mark more specifically, even talk to some other publishers that are already on the platform. We welcome any and all of those conversations and uh, hope to meet some of you soon. Thank you.